Welcome to the testing world. So in previous session we have seen how we can write test case using TestNG, how we can execute them, how we can write multiple test case in a file, what is priority and how we can skip any specific test case. Now I'll come to few more features which we are going to get in TestNG. So in TestNG we are having a file with the name testng.xml. We have to understand the role of this file. But first of all if I go to Eclipse you will not find this file anywhere. So where we are going to get this file I'll show you. But before that if you understand as of now we have two files. In first file we have three test cases. In second file we have one test case. In the same way when we are working in a team we can write maybe 100 files and in 100 files we have total 500 test cases. Now the question is how we are going to execute them. One approach is that we will open first file just execute it. In the same way I'll go to the second file and execute it. In this way we will have to open 100 files and execute each and every file manually. But it does not seem to be a good approach. Why? Because if we have 100 files and I want to execute all 500 test cases, I'll go to the 100 files and executing one by one. That doesn't seem to be right approach. We should have an option where we can click and it will execute all the test case exist in all files. So if you understand about a test suite, so in manual testing, test suite can be defined as a collection of test cases. So if you want to execute individual test case, that's fine. Or you can execute test suite. So when you execute test suite, it will execute all the test cases inside it. In the same way, we should have some option here by which we can just click and execute all test cases. How we can do that? For doing this, testng has given us a file with the name testng.xml. This file behaves as a test suite. So I can say in testng we have a file with the name testng.xml which behave as a test suite or test suite which is a collection of test cases. But how to get this file? Okay, let me go back to the project and you can right click on the project. There you'll get an option of testng, convert to testng. So as you go to the convert to testng, it is going to generate a file with the name testng.xml. I'll just click finish. So as you click finish, it will generate a file with the name testng.xml. If you open that, you will notice, I'm going to the source, you will notice it already has the entry of all test case file that you have created. So if you can see, I have two files, A and B. There we have written the test case. It already has the entry of A and B. Whenever you want to execute all the test cases, you just need to open this file and run. So it is asking for would you like to execute as a test suite? Yes. It will execute all test cases. So if you notice, first it is going to the B file because we mentioned B here. There we have only one test case. It has executed. Then it going to the test case file 1 where we have three test cases. So it executed three test cases. So here we can understand in testng we have a file with the name testng.xml and this file is going to behave as a test suite. Advantage is that whenever we want to execute all the test cases it just need one click. So by one click it will execute all the test cases which are mentioned here. So here we have seen what is testng, what is testng.xml and how we can execute test cases using testng.xml. One more thing I will show here. As of now we have two files. In that we have few test cases. Okay, later on I go and create few more files. So I create one more file with the name c.java and there also I am going to write one more test case. So now I am just writing one more test case with the name tc004 and just printing that. Now point is, in the testng.xml we have entry of two classes only. So how we can add the newly added class 
in this file so we have two options one option is that just go to the project right click tsng convert to tsng so now it will create a new file with three classes inside it so what all the classes you are having at current point of time it will add them in your tsng.xml that is one option and this file will replace the existing file so every time when you are adding new test cases you can generate new file that is one option other option could be you we know that these are the lines which are adding these test cases so you can just copy this line and just put it over here so here we need to give the package name and class name so if you notice package name is testing and the class name is c advantage would be if you want to execute this file always first so you can just write it like this so ultimately we are able to control the execution of our test case through this file so here i have just mentioned like i want to execute all these files so execute all the test case which exist in these three files let me show you i'm just executing as a test suite first it is executing c file where we have one test case then b file where we have one test case a file where we have three test cases and in each file it will execute the test case as per the priority so if you notice in this file a we have three test case and it is executing as per their priority so in this case we got this file and now we understand this use of this tsng.xml advantage would be later on you got a new build and you don't want to execute the test case exist in these two files so you can simply just remove these two lines and execute your test suite so now it will execute only the file a which have few test cases and to control the execution you need not to make any changes in your file you just need to make changes in this test ng.xml so now we got understanding how we can execute all test cases by single click using testng.xml and how we can control the execution okay now i'm coming to the next point default reporting in testng so in testng you are going to get a default report means it will generate a report as well where we can check it first just go to the project and refresh so i'll just right click and refresh as you refresh you will get a folder with the name test output if you go there you will get a file with the name index.html so we are getting here just go to the properties and fetch its path because that's a html file so we are going to open it on the browser now moving to the browser here on the browser put that url and it shows that report so if you remember there we have a file one file there we have total three test cases so last time we executed only one file having three test cases and it shows all the test cases are passed as of now if you notice it is generating report but th but this is not a very attractive report so later on we are going to improve this report in automation we are going to generate very good reports but that is the basic functionality we are having with testng so i have shown you testng is also generating a basic report which we can use also you'll get one more report here which is emailable report so you can open that report on the browser as well i'll just copy moving to browser and just put the url you will get a file with the name emailable report here it shows three test cases all are passed if any of the test case is going to be failed it will show you the reason but as of now everything is passed so it shows these are passed so now we got understanding what is the default reporting option in testng next we need to cover run failed test case only but as of now our all test case are getting passed so in next session i'll show you how we can adding assertions compare actual result with expected result and there my test case is going to be failed then i'll show you this functionality where we can execute only failed test case i'll show you that so here in the session we have seen what is tsng.xml how to execute test cases using tsng.xml default reporting options we are having here in tsng that's all we have 
Thanks for watching this video.